You're listening to the OCD Stories podcast, hosted by me, Stuart Ralph. The OCD Stories is a podcast dedicated to raising awareness and understanding around obsessive compulsive symptoms. I do this through interviewing inspired therapists, psychologists, and people who have experienced OCD. Welcome to the OCD Stories. And welcome to episode 438 of the podcast. And in this one, I got back on Dr. Russ Harris. Russ is a medical practitioner and author of the international best-selling self-help book, The Happiness Trap. Russ has been on the show before to talk about acceptance and commitment therapy and some of his ideas. And in this episode, we talk about his new card deck based on the principles and ideas and exercises from the book, The Happiness Trap. We also talk about the skill of noticing and naming. He guides us through the act, skill, dropping anchor. The problems with distraction, self-compassion, and he guides us through the kind hands exercise, and much, much more. And thank you to NoCD for supporting the podcast. NoCD offers effective and convenient therapy available in the US and outside the US. To find out more about NoCD, their therapy plans, if they currently take your insurance, or to download their free app, head to go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories, or the link will be in the episode description. Thank you to all of our patrons for supporting our work. To sign up to our Patreon and to check out the other benefits you'll receive as a patron, please see the link in the show notes. So thank you to Russ for his time and expertise. Always a pleasure to chat with him. And of course, thank you to you guys for listening. And without further ado, here is Russ. Welcome back to the podcast, Russ. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Third time now, isn't it? I think it is yeah. third time. Yeah. 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 It's awesome to have you back here. Um, so I guess just, I can't even remember when we did the last one. It was a year and a half, maybe if not more. Yeah. Yeah. Longer, so I think. Longer. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So it was just as you were <laughs> oh. releasing your second, ad- a new edition of the happiness trap. I think that's when we did it. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So about two years, one and a half, two years. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. So I guess yeah. I'm just curious how that new edition has been received and then also just any update you want to give on yourself and what you're doing. Uh, yeah, well, the feedback's been been very positive with it. I think um, you know the it, it's the it's a big leap forward. Uh, I, I think that that reflect how the app model itself has evolved, um, and uh, I think adding those new bits into it, the, the all the extra stuff about self compassion, dropping ganker has kind of struck a chord with folks. So um, it's uh, it's it's been uh, exciting seeing it getting out there and getting translated into into different languages and all the different book covers that are coming out in different countries um so uh yeah that i mean that's that's um what am i doing well i i I have just actually signed a contract for a third edition okay of at made simple (laughs) so uh it's been um six years uh, since the second edition came out and act itself is kind of continuing to grow and change. Um, Steve Hayes, the creator of act has pretty much officially killed the hexaflex mm. that, um, that hexagonal diagram that lists the six core app processes. And, uh, and, and so this new book kind of goes along with that and, and is really just looking at a more sort of process based form of act uh, that's much more flexible and uh, extensive and uh, you know bigger better act really okay. so that's going to keep keep me busy for the next few months at least oh that's amazing um and yeah johnny who i was mentioning off air sent me that over whatsapp the other day about the hexaflex or something you'd put i think in one of the facebook groups about moving away from it um oh, right yeah yeah well so it, that, it, it's you know it's dominated at training uh not not self-help books but but textbooks and trainings for, for t- almost 20 years now and yeah. so uh you know a lot of people have come to think well the hexaflex is the act model um and it, it's not it's a, it's a useful teaching diagram but there's so much more to the model than that so i'm quite relieved that it's um on the way out to be honest <laughs> okay fair enough and I've only just re- finally remembered each point. <laughs> I'd always forget one. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a lot. It's it's a quite yeah. a complicated diagram. I I was the same until I you know, 
completely gone over it about a million times. Yeah. yeah. And things obviously like self as context, that's a bit confusing. Um, oh, just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay. Well, well done on getting the third, uh, third edition signed and I uh, look forward to seeing <laughs> that. Um, so um, just looking at my questions, you know, I, as I mentioned, actually, just before that, so you've also released a Happiness Trap deck of cards. Just anything you want to say on that? Yeah, well, that was that was surprisingly hard thing to do. I think it's one of the hardest things I've ever actually done because um, the Shambhala, who are the, the USA publishers mm. of the Happiness Trap, asked me to create these these card decks. Um, and, you know, those of you who've subscribed to Patreon and you can see these on the video... There yeah. you go. That's worth your like Patreon it. subscription right there. <laughs> um, but um, and the idea was to come up with a deck of cards. Each card would, yeah, you know, have a little description of a, an act uh, principle um, on on one side, and then a little practice you could do on the other side. And boy, was it hard because you know if you've got two or three pages, you can really take your time and explore these things in a book. But on a on a little card to summarize them in 150 words, which was the word limit, and uh, uh, you know, and then come up with an actual practical strategy also in 150 words on the other side, uh, it was it was really really difficult, and um, yeah. it was just this process of writing and then editing and cutting it down. And can I say this in a simpler way? So I actually learned a lot uh, that was useful from it. I learned how to say things in a more succinct and uh, uh, it, it's amazing um, how much you can shorten and abbreviate things if you're really trying. Mm. Uh, but uh, trying to find that balance between keeping it short but also keeping it understandable and practical yeah. uh, it was very hard. So, <laughs> but I'm quite excited. Uh, you know, so it's it's just 50 cards and you can pull them out at random, and each card's got a little principle on one side and a little practice you can do on the other side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they are good. I've got, I've got a deck, and um, yeah, I think anyone who's really interested in act and want to learn some more, learn more of these skills. I think, like you said, pulling out one of the cards a day and just trying to practice, learn, learn it because the, the descriptions, although 150 words, they felt decent. Like there's a good amount of information on there, and then on the back, as you say, it's the exercise or practice. Um, available in all good bookstores, and yeah. also in some of the crappy bookstores. There we go. Yeah. And Amazon. Um, and Amazon. With no comments about Amazon. Okay. Is it on Amazon, I should say? <laughs> it is on Amazon. Okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah it's like, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's unfortunately, you, you have to sell your soul to the devil, unfortunately, mm -hmm. if you're an author. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's true. I'm sure they take a decent cut of it as well. Um, so, uh i guess we did talk a bit about rumination last time um there's always more to talk about and obviously for people with ocd it's such a key area and key compulsion that just keeps tripping people up um including myself from time to time and i have to continue to practice the skills of myself um and we did dropping anchor last time you know in my practice so i'll do dipping in and out of the stream a lot as a way of working with mm. So I thought it'd be good experientially to do another one, whether it's the same or whether it's something new um, and anything you want to say about rumination. Yeah, well, you know, rumination and it's, and it's twin brother or twin sister worrying really they're, they're, you know, two sides of the same kind of mental process to figure things out, solve our problems, keep us safe, you know, come up with, a solution to the the problem that we're dealing with so of mm. course there you say from time to time i'm like only from time to time well, you know? yeah i'm trying to look good uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, i mean gosh i i had a sleepless night last night um uh, as we speak um a hacker has taken over my facebook group um the happiness trap facebook group um i don't know how it happened they, they got Steve in. Hayes, is it <laughs> no, no, it's a guy who who goes by the moniker Billy Miracle, and he's yeah. taken over as admin, and he's he's kicked me out, and I don't know what he wants. He hasn't asked for money oh. or anything, and I've been trying to get Facebook to do something about it, and they're not doing anything no. about it. And so, you know, my brain was just worrying about this all night long, you know, and uh, it was a a good 
<laughs> opportunity. <laughs> Not a, a welcome opportunity, but uh, no. uh, you know, to just really practice this stuff over and over and over and over again. It's like when, mm. um, you know, and, and of course, uh, in this case, there is a, a, a genuine uh, a problem there. But of course, often I, that problem solving mechanism kicks in when when there's not such a, a genuine threat there. Yeah. Um, wow. So I guess, you know, one of the key insights, at least from an app perspective, is that this is is normal. This is, you know, rumination, worrying, obsessing, the, that's the problem-solving mind. It, it's basically a problem-solving machine. How do I figure this out? How do I deal with this? Mm -hmm. um, so it happens to all of us uh, yeah. more than time to time. But yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, obviously, for some more than others, and obviously, you know, much, much more when when there's real stress in our life. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. And obviously, sorry, you know, it's been hacked. It's it's irritating when that happens. Hopefully, it gets sorted pretty quickly. But I think you know, as you're saying that, obviously, with OCD, often rumination, the worry is there's not even like the tiniest percent of truth in it. Um, it's so far fetched off an OCD worries, but even if there is a real problem like you're, you're facing, the rumination is the problem solving part, but it can go a step further than that, right? Where you're not even trying to solve it anymore. You're rehashing the same stuff over and over again, which is now torturing you almost. If you've, mm. you've taken steps, it's almost we need to wait for the next step or, mm. or figure it out. But there's only so much figuring out we can do, and at some point we have to step back, and then rumination mm. becomes problematic, right? It does. It does. Mm. Uh, and the problem is, you know, one of the problems is, is that both, you know, like all of those processes, ruminating, worrying, obsessing, is is that one of the things that reinforces them is that they actually feel like you're working hard on your problems, mm. even though there's a part of you that knows logically and rationally that's not the case. There's a, there's a, a stronger part uh, that that's just kind of like well I'm working at this I'm dealing with this I'm coming up with something I'm it, it does feel like a lot of mental effort uh, and, and unfortunately that can be very reinforcing of of all of this kind of uh, cognitive stuff that's that's not really that helpful. Yeah, very good point. So um, you know something um, you know I've heard I've, oh, I've, I mean I signed up to your training um uh about rumination and obsessing and worrying it was in november last year i think right on contextual consulting i believe and anyway i'm only getting around to watch it now before it runs out at the end of may <laughs> <laughs> so in that the night before <laughs> yeah the free much yeah um and obviously like i said the dropping anger dipping out the stream i think what you're doing in that training you know i, I use anyway with my clients but i just wanted to get a refresher um but why I'm sharing this is, you know, as you said in that, and I've heard you say it before, which is we've got to stop talking about act and actually practice act or do act. Um, <laughs> and I've been very guilty with my clients in talking too much about act. So I thought it'd be good yeah, yeah to, to practice a skill now. So I don't know if that maybe we don't have time for dipping in and out of the stream. Maybe it's refreshing, dropping anchor. Um, yeah. How long yeah. have we got? Uh, we got. Another 45 minutes. All oh, right. Yeah, no, we, we probably got time for both. But, okay. um, you know, I, I, like, I, I think every act therapist has been guilty of uh, <laughs> talking about it uh, <laughs> rather than doing it. Me too. Um, and it's, um, I, 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 again, I, I, it's something that, that's kind of quite challenging because talking about rumination and worrying is also feels like you're doing something about it. Um, whereas, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> less taught more action is going to get better results this yeah. um it's uh you know like we can talk and discuss the problems that arise from uh ruminating worrying obsessing and uh you know that can keep people doing supportive counseling for years and years and years without really changing anything because each week they come and talk about what they've been obsessing about or ruminating on and for that hour it feels like you're working really hard on your issues and you're understanding yourself um but of course nothing changes it's just in, in a sense ruminating about your ruminating or worrying yeah. about your worrying um so yes i'm very happy to do something practical <laughs> cool. if you want yeah 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 let's do it um i'll let you take the lead maybe, maybe we do a refresher on dropping anchor and 
and maybe explain to those that haven't come across it why it's called dropping anchor and um anything else yeah well i mean um i kind of see it as a a second line response to ruminating worrying obsessing the the first line is just to actually notice that's what your mind's doing and just put a name to it you know as kind of uh, just that sort of non-judgmental language yeah he's noticing as uh, he's ruminating or he's worrying or there's my mind problem solving or there's the problem solving machine doing its stuff again or if it's around a particular theme naming the theme okay well there's the not good enough theme or there's the you know the bad thing happened theme but just some sort of non-judgmental noticing and naming of the cognitive process um and often useful to combine that with a sort of classic act technique thanking your mind is go oh, thanks mind i know you're you're trying to help me solve some problems here or deal with this or sort this out or figure this out thanks uh, it's okay uh, i'm going to deal with this in my own way um and often just that kind of uh, little sort of noticing and naming practice the hardest part about that is 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 remembering to do it you know yeah. because <laughs> Most these cognitive processes so quickly grab you and pull you in, you don't even realize you're doing it. Um, so, um, uh, but if you can sort of catch it in the act, kind of, oh, yeah, there it is again. Thanks, mind. I know what you're doing. Um, and that will often go at least some way to helping you sort of step out of that cognitive process, uh, which then makes it, um, if you can't step out of it fully, then that's when you, it's very useful to bring in something like dropping anchor. Um, which gets its name because, you know, when, when a boat's in the harbour, it needs to drop anchor. If it doesn't drop anchor, then storms or, you know, heavy winds will just blow that boat out to sea or smash it into the rocks. Mm -hmm. um, and so an anchor won't control storms. You know, if a storm blows up, the anchor will hold the boat steady in the harbour. Um, uh, but it, uh, it, it won't make the storm pass any faster. It won't get rid of it or stop it. Um, and so if we can learn to drop anchor with our own cognitive storms, you know, all those worrying, ruminating thoughts um, or our own emotional storms or the feelings that often go with uh, that cognitive stuff, you know, cognitions and emotions sort of feed into each other and create all of this, you know, disturbing emotional weather. If we can drop anchor in the midst of those emotional and cognitive storms, then that helps hold us steady so we can act more effectively, engage in our life, do the things mm -hmm. that, you know, that are important and meaningful. Um, uh, so you can use dropping anchor techniques to, you know, interrupt rumination and worrying. Uh, when you realize that you've been caught up in this stuff, you can use it to sort of step out and refocus your attention on what's important. Um, and there's hundreds uh, of different dropping anchor techniques, but they all really revolve around a simple three-part formula, um, which makes it easy to create your own and vary the length of them. Um, so um, shall I just go into it? Or Yeah, please, you... yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, well, actually, there's a card on this in the deck of cards. There is. Yeah. Impala would be very happy. Here you go. When emotional storms blow up, drop anchor and... On the back, it says how to drop anchor, repeat the A cycle. The A is for acknowledge your inner world. The C is for connect with your body. And the E is for engage in your activity. So, um, will I just talk to the listeners and viewers as if they're participating? Yeah, and then I'll participate along with them. Great. And so, you know, if... If you as the viewer or listener are, you know, doing brain surgery right now or flying an aeroplane or something, um, wait until you've finished doing that before you actually uh, mm. <laughs> participate in this exercise. Um, and uh, so the ACE formula, let, let me just take you through it then. So the A is for acknowledge your inner world or acknowledge your, your thoughts and feelings. So just do this right now. Just take a moment to acknowledge. What's your mind doing? Is it whirring away? Is it relatively silent? If it's chattering away, is it saying something useful or not? And a quick scan from head to toe of your body and just kind of notice 
what's going on in your body. Are there any areas of tightness, and any areas of uh, discomfort or tension, any particular feelings like a, a racing heart or knots in the stomach, any pleasant feelings or uncomfortable feelings that are, are showing up? And the idea here is just to, to non-judgmentally notice those thoughts and feelings. You're not trying to control them or change them in any way. You're just acknowledging they're there. This is what my mind's doing, and this is what my body is doing in this moment. Um, the C is then to connect with your body or connect with the physical movement in some way. So I, I will encourage uh, you and the, the listeners to uh, really push your feet hard into the floor and straighten your back and shrug your shoulders and have a little stretch of some sort. And just kind of get a sense that there's a, a body here that you can move. You can wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, a lot of different things that you can do. So there's thoughts and feelings showing up. There's a body around them that you can move. That's the C, connect with your body or connect with movement. And then the E is for engage in your current activity. So um, maybe you just look around the room, notice what you can see and hear, lift up your head, take it all in, breathe in the air, get a sense of what you're doing. And of course, the main activity in this moment is, is doing this exercise with me. So if you can see me, giving me your full attention, if you can hear me really tuning into my voice and just kind of getting a sense, here you are participating in this podcast. Um, so those are the three steps, uh, acknowledging your inner world, connecting with your body, engaging in your activity. And what I'll do then is I'll run through this a couple of times with less talk and more action, if that's okay. Yep. So, so once again, just acknowledging thoughts popping up, feelings in your body. And this time, add a little phrase in, say, I am noticing. Just silently to yourself, I'm noticing thoughts about, I'm noticing feelings of. And once again, connecting with your body or a physical movement, a really good stretch this time. Listeners, stretch those arms, stretch those legs, stretch that neck. I'm sure you're tight in places, but really stretch. And the idea here is not distraction. The idea here is that there's thoughts and feelings and you've got a lot of control over your actions. So there's movement of your body around these thoughts and feelings. And then the E is for engage in the world around you. So once again, opening your eyes and ears, breathing in the air, taking it in and really bringing your attention back to this activity, tuning into what you can hear and see, doing this exercise as part of this podcast. And can we do that one more time? Yep. Yep. Okay. So once again, acknowledging thoughts, feelings, and just adding that little phrase in, I am noticing. Once again, connecting with the body. Really good stretch this time. Kind of if you're sitting down, sit up straight in your chair. If you're walking, feel your feet on the floor. And so there's thoughts and feelings and body you can move. And then the ears for engaging. And once again, looking around, taking in the sights, the sounds, breathing in the air, and refocusing on this activity that you're doing right now. So those are the basic steps. What happened for you uh, as you did that, uh, Stuart? Yeah, I definitely find, found on the third run through, my mind was was starting to get a bit calmer. And I know that's not necessarily the goal of dropping anchor, but mm -hmm. it was bringing me back in into the present moment a bit more. Um, mm. And it was throughout the three runs, my mind did wander off at times and I had to keep naming it and bringing it back. Mm. Um yeah, that's what I noticed. Yeah, you know, and, and so that's a, a common finding. Uh, obviously, the, the 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 more turbulent the it's not it's probably not obvious. Um, <laughs> I've got a bad habit of saying obviously, um, but the uh, 
the more turbulent the emotional weather, the more dramatic the effect of this exercise. If if mm. your mind's not worrying very much, if your feelings are not particularly um, you know unsettled, you, you may not notice so much of a difference. But uh, when there is a big storm blowing up, the difference is quite often profound. And mm. what people often find is you know they're more able to focus, bring their attention back, engage in what they're doing. Uh, they hopefully find that they have a lot more control over their physical actions. If you want to act effectively, it's good to know that you can move your arms and your legs and you can actually take control of your physical body. Um, and people often find it's then much easier to engage and focus on the uh, activity that they're doing. Um, and, you know, the, it's very important to distinguish this from distraction. So, out there in the world of self-help and psychology, there's a lot of distraction techniques uh, where the aim is to try and take your attention away from your thoughts and feelings. Hmm. Um, and uh, if if you were to miss out the acknowledging part of this exercise, it would turn into a distraction technique. Um, but by repeatedly acknowledging the thoughts and feelings that are here, mm. it becomes more of an acceptance and mindfulness technique um, in line with the ACT model. Yeah. So um, that's kind of important. I don't know if you want to go into the potential problems with distraction. Um, yeah, we can do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, distraction is not bad or wrong, but one of the problems with it is that um, very often, you know, if you're trying very hard to distract yourself from difficult thoughts and feelings, it doesn't work. Um, or uh, if it does work, there's a sort of rebound effect. You kind of escape them for a short while and then they, you know, bounce back into your consciousness with renewed force. And, uh, um, you know, so uh, at the best, um, distraction is like a sort of short term band aid approach, really. Um, what we're trying to do here is acknowledge, you know, there's there's difficult thoughts and feelings here, and and uh, with those thoughts and feelings, I can still act effectively and engage in the world and focus on on what I need to do. Hmm. Yeah, I think for me, intention always comes into it because I find refocusing on your values and what matters to you in life and distraction, they they almost have the same outcome. If you look at it on the surface but the intention mm. is the thing that separates them one is avoidance mm. of thoughts and feelings the other one is moving towards something again again that reminds me of the choice point you know that towards and away towards yeah towards and away yeah i, I like the way you said that I, I i was reading as steve hayes was writing uh, about this uh, a while back on his kind of public um list of and he he kind of he had a cool way of saying it. it's like distraction versus attraction. Mm. When you're moving towards your values and your values-based goals and the stuff that matters, yes, your focus goes there, um, but it's attraction moving towards what's meaningful and important. Whereas distraction, um, it, it, it actually literally means pulling away from pain. Um, and so it's about trying to escape and avoid and get away from things, uh, which is, is a very different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, and you know, you mentioned noticing and naming before we did dropping anchor. And mm -hmm. this is something obviously I, I teach and do with my clients. Um, the thing I think i still can't, I don't have a good answer for is. My, my answer basically in terms of learning it, because with rumination, especially with OCD, we can get pulled into it for days sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and then it might, re I, you know, even now two hours ago by and I've just been ruminating for two hours. Like, what am I doing? Okay, mm -hmm. let me know it's a name or drop anchor or whatever it is. Um, I guess what am I trying to say is how do I help them or any of the listeners build up that skill of being able to notice because you, when you notice, you can name, but if you don't notice, you can't name. So it's how do you build <laughs> up the skill of noticing just for repetition and yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a good question. Yeah. Repetition is, is such an important part of it. And so, uh, you know, you can think of, um, you can think of the seven hours, really. The seven hours are useful for, for building up any uh, sort of skill. So um, the 
should we go through these? They're yeah, kind of please. um um so one is uh reminders. So any sort of reminder system, you know, there's all sorts of apps um that can you know pop up and send you reminders to practice a particular exercise. Mm-hmm. Obviously you can have the good old fashioned stick it up stick it note or post it note on the fridge or on the mirror that reminds you to, you know, drop anchor or practice noticing and naming your thoughts. Uh, you can have objects that remind you, uh, um, you, you can, um, the, another R is for routines. So you can build noticing practices into your routine. For example, before you flip up the top of your laptop or before you boot up your computer, you can just do a little 10 or 20 second noticing and naming practice so it becomes mm-hmm. natural. Or every time you uh, boot up an app on your phone, uh, on your laptop, you know, or your computer, uh, again, you could just spend 10 to 20 seconds just noticing and naming as that boots up. Um, the uh, um, Another R uh, is... Um, rewards so you can have a sort of reward system in place that if you practice a particular exercise um you know uh, i suppose you you can if you do your little dropping anchor three times a day then at the end of the week you can give yourself a reward whatever that might be um Mm -hmm. hopefully something healthy and life enhancing uh not a big snort of cocaine or something like that but, um, you know, get a massage or, you know, put some money towards that thing that you've been saving up for. Um, the, uh, uh, the fourth R is records. So there's all sorts of record keeping systems. Um, you, you can write in your calendar or your diary or a journal, um, uh, keep a record of the practice and how long you did it for and what it was like and so forth. Um, and so those kind of uh, things help you build in a regular practice into your life. It's all very well to say I'm going to practice, but um, uh, mm. you know, often we do need a bit of formal structure to help us with that. The other three R's um, or relationships. So who is there in your life that can help you with this? You know, mm. even just um, <laughs> having an understanding partner that knows. The signals when you have drifted off and you're lost in your rumination or worrying, you might just agree on a little hand signal that your partner can do that says, well, I'm here, come back. Or you might have a, a, a friend or a buddy that can practice these exercises with you or uh, or that you might be able to check in and tell them that you've been practicing your, your dropping anchor or your mindfulness exercises or you know, there's lots of ways that you can use supportive relationships to remind you and keep you on track. Um, then there's um, restructuring the environment. Uh, so, again, this builds on on the other R's, um, you know, putting things into the environment that remind you to do your practice. That might include having audio recordings handy. It might include, as we said, you know, some of those stick it notes or whatever you're using for your record keeping, or even bringing your partner or friend into the environment to help you remember and practice this stuff. Um, And um, I guess the, uh, uh, the, the, the the final R is really reflecting, just stopping throughout the day or at the end of the day, just to reflect on what you've been doing and the effect it's been having on your life. And again, that might be in the form of a diary. It might be in the form of a check-in with a, a friend or a partner or a loved one, or it just might be in the form of just stopping to reflect to yourself for a minute before you go to bed. You know, what did I practice? What difference did it make? You know, um, how can I do more of this? So all of those things will, um, uh, I mean, the key thing is, as you said, is get the practice in, but these practical steps can help you actually do the practice and remember to do the practice. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course that was already useful. And then as you practice, I'm, I guess you, it just gets easier to notice when you've been, uh, caught in rumination. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people find that, you know, uh, uh, and it's, um, <laughs> I mean, I still get caught in it, uh, but, you know, at least I'm now able to kind of say to my partner, you know, 
I'm sorry, I was so lost in my head then. I know we just had a whole conversation, but I can't remember anything that we were talking about. Can we have that conversation again at this time? I'm really going to tune into what you're saying, you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm scared to ask her, but I, I hope that I do that less than I used to. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but no matter how much you kind of practice with this stuff, um, it, there's always room for improvement. Yeah. Yeah, good point. <clears throat> and um, I want to move on from to self-compassion. So we're dipping in and out of the stream. What I'll say is if anyone's interested, they can get the new edition of The Happiness Trap. And you, <laughs> you, you've got that in there, right? I do. Okay. Good. I do. And, and you know, there's a, there's a, in the edition, there's also, um, there's a free ebook that goes with it that's got free audio recordings of dropping anchor and dipping in and out of the stream that people can use. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you. So, um, you know, self-compassion, I use some of the, the tools you've put in the happiness trap. Uh, I also use compassion focused therapy as well. Um, so from a, an act point of view though, just anything you want to say on self-compassion and also if there's any particular exercise. So for example, one I like, uh, that you use is, uh, kind hands or kind touch. I always, <laughs> which one do you call it? I always kind of interchange. What's the Same. official same yeah uh, same <laughs> good um uh, so so yeah um whether we we can practice that or there's a different one you think would be interesting yeah well you know i'm, I'm so glad you raised it because self-compassion is, is so important and it it doesn't come naturally for most people and hmm. um, particularly if we've got deeply entrenched self-judgment self-criticism uh, the idea of actually being kind to ourselves it can be quite confronting, quite threatening for people. Uh, for some people, when they first start practicing self-compassion, it can actually trigger harsh self-judgment as a reaction. I don't deserve this. I'm a bad person and so forth. But boy, is it important, right? When you're hurt and you're suffering and you're, you're dealing with, with life's challenges, uh, a bit of kindness uh, goes a long way. Um, and unfortunately, um, for most of us, the you know our default setting is we just judge ourselves, beat ourselves up, criticize ourselves. And and again, it's 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 important to recognize our mind's not just trying to make our life miserable. Uh, again, the the uh, you know your mind's always trying to help when it does this stuff. The, the your mind's idea is that if I just you know, if I give you a hard enough time, if I really, uh, you know, get stuck mm -hmm. into you, then you're going to sort yourself out and deal with this and stop making these mistakes and, you know, kind of shape up, right? Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, um, that strategy may at times motivate you. Most of us at times can be motivated by a bit of self-judgment and self-criticism, but more often than not, it has the opposite effect. It demotivates us and just makes us feel mm -hmm. depressed and miserable and which is then fodder for more rumination, right? True. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So self-compassion. Um, a lot of the time with clients, I just call it self-kindness. Um, okay. some some people react a bit negatively to the term compassion. They kind mm. of has religious connotations for them. Yeah. Have you found that? Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. I mean, I work with children and young people. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm in a particular religious area, uh, and the UK isn't so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it's more, but I can see, I can absolutely see that though for certain parts of the world and people. Um, but no, for me, it's more, it's a bit soft. It's a bit mm -hmm. weak. It's woo woo. It's not going to do anything. How's compassion <laughs> going to help me? Um, yeah. so maybe it does link to religion in that sense of that unconditional, you know, care and love and yeah. how's that going to help me? Yeah. I mean, those kind of reactions are, are quite common. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, it's like, um, I've, I've found that this certain groups, like, uh, if, if I've been working with the armed forces or the emergency services, a lot of very tough men and women in those uh organizations that have really learned to suppress their feelings because they have to deal with such difficult stuff um 
And so uh, <laughs> the idea of compassion can be, as you say, a bit woo-woo and soft and weak and so forth. Mm. Uh, the way I uh, I kind of often introduce it is um, is just to sidestep all of those words and concepts and just kind of say, look, you're going through a really rough patch in your life. There's lots of really difficult stuff you're dealing with. Now, as you're dealing with this, what kind of mate do you want by your side? Mm. Do you want the kind of mate who's like, ah, stop your whinging, suck it up, get on with it. No one cares about you. Just just deal with it. We don't want to hear about it. You know, mm. is that the mate you want at your side? Or do you want the mate at your side who says, I'm with you every step of the way. I've got your back. This is really tough. I am with you, whatever it takes. What mate do you want? And even the biggest, toughest, most skeptical people, uh, you know, were like, yeah, I want the second kind of mate. I said, okay, so what kind of mate are you being to yourself here? Are you more like the second or more like the first? And, oh, more like the first. So that's what we're talking about, being here for yourself the same way that you would be there for your loved one or your child, right? You know, uh, to help them out. That's what we're talking about. Um, and, and so very important for all of us. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, um, yeah, so lots of, well, I mean, we can do kind hands. Kind hands, I think, is a very powerful uh, exercise for most people. Nothing works for everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the basic idea is kind of putting a, a hand on, on, on your over your heart or over a painful feeling in your body and sending in kindness, and we can do that in a moment. Um, I, but, I, you know, I, I have had some people that just got nothing out of this, like, yeah, there's a hand, mate. I can feel a hand there, yeah. What am I supposed to feel? Oh, well, you know, supposed to feel a bit of kindness. No, it's just a hand. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but I would hope that your listeners and viewers uh, will get something out of this if they're willing to give it a go. Um, so, yeah. should we do it right now? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So, the idea here then, it's about um, just about uh, acknowledging what's what's difficult and painful in your life today and, and just being there in a kind, supportive way for yourself. So just take a moment to, to think about whatever it is that you're struggling with or finding difficult, um, whether it's a health issue or relationship issue or whether a cyber hacker has taken over your Facebook group, um, whatever the issue is, just tuning into it and just kind of getting a sense of of, uh, of what it feels like for you, what kind of feelings it brings up for you, does it bring up anxiety, sadness, anger, guilt, what kind of thoughts does it bring up for you and just acknowledging that whatever this problem or difficulty is just acknowledging it it's painful it 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 has an impact on your health and well-being Uh, depending on what it is it may also be impacting your loved ones or people that you look after this is a genuine difficulty a genuine hardship and it hurts So just taking a moment to acknowledge that. And also to acknowledge that when people are hurting and dealing with difficulties, they deserve kindness and caring and support. They don't deserve to be judged and criticized and ignored and trivialized. And it's the same for you. So with that in mind, just kind of, Scan your body from head to toe and just kind of get a sense of, of where, where you feel this, where you feel this difficulty or pain or problem or suffering. Like, it, is it all in your head? Is it like a pressure in your head? Is it like a tightness in your chest? Is it like a, a knot in your tummy? Is it a sense of numbness or emptiness? Is it a sense of tension in your neck muscles? Just kind of like a curious scientist just sort of scanning your body, just getting a sense of where you actually feel this, head, neck, shoulders, chest, tummy, arms, legs. And turn one of your hands palm upwards and see if you can fill this hand with a sense of kindness and caring. Uh, You've used this hand in kind ways to help other people, Maybe you've helped out a friend with a difficult task. Maybe you've held someone's hand or rubbed someone's shoulders or cuddled a crying baby. You've 
if you use this hand in kind ways to help others. And the idea now is to turn that kindness inwards to yourself. So in some way, get a sense of your hand filling up with kindness. You might imagine this or feel this or sense this or or just think about this or visualize it. However you do, that is fine. Just a sense of kindness in your hand. And then take your hand, and I'm going to give you two options here. One is to either gently rest it on top of your heart. The other is to rest it on wherever you're feeling this pain in your body, whatever part of your body you're feeling tense or numb or feeling that hurt. And just resting it gently on the surface of your body, over your heart or over that pain. And just experimenting with the touch. Some people like a really firm touch. Some people like a very soft, gentle touch. Some people actually prefer to hover a centimeter or two above the surface, not actually touching, but just hovering above the surface. So whatever you prefer. And just imagining, feeling, sensing, or thinking about warmth and kindness flowing from that hand into your body up and down in all directions to the top of your head and the tips of your toes. And wherever that warmth and kindness encounters pain, hurt, numbness, closing off, shutting down, just sending that warmth and kindness into those areas. So if there is a particular feeling there, see if you can soften up around that feeling, hold it gently, hold it kindly. See if you can hold this feeling like it's a crying baby or a whimpering puppy or a a precious butterfly, holding it really gently and just sending in that kindness and that warmth and extending that up and down your body into any area where there's pain or hurt or numbness or closing down or tension. Sending warmth and kindness. And just taking a moment to acknowledge in your own words that this hurts, this is painful. And also in your own words to find a way to remind yourself to to be kind. Be kind. Go easy on yourself. Find your own way to put that into words. And then I'm going to invite you to do a double hander. Take your other hand and and rest it either on your tummy or on your chest or some other part of your body or place it on top of the first hand, whichever you prefer. I've got one hand on my chest, one hand on my tummy. I find that a very comfortable position. And again, just experimenting with the touch. Some people like a really firm, almost hugging pressure. Some like a very soft, gentle touch. Some like to hover above the surface. And just sending that warmth and kindness in. Acknowledging that this is difficult. This hurts. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Go easy on yourself. And if your mind is interfering with this, judging or criticizing or saying you don't deserve kindness or it's weak or it's silly or it's soft, then just try silently thanking your mind, say thanks mind, and know you're trying to help. I know you think being hard on me is is the way to go and it's okay, I'm, I'm experimenting with something a bit different here. And then just bring your attention back to these kind hands, sending that warmth and kindness inwards. And just before we bring this exercise to an end, see if you can think ahead uh, to later in the day, later in the week, what are, are some little kind things you can maybe say and do to yourself do for yourself throughout the day. Support yourself and look after yourself as you deal with the 
ongoing stresses of of being human, living a full human life. And maybe we'll just finish by dropping anchor. So kind of just acknowledging whatever thoughts and feelings are there. And pushing your feet into the floor and straightening up and having a stretch. Opening your eyes and ears. And looking around the room. Engaging in what you're doing right now. There we go. Uh, so, how did you go? That was good. That was uh, that was relaxing. Uh, I mean, I have no no well, as far as I'm aware, I have no resistance to kindness or self compassion. Um, um, but it, yeah, it's just a reminder of I bring self compassion in day to day a lot in how I, I talk to myself. But mm-hmm. I think there's something very different about doing a dedicated exercise to it. And, and giving mm-hmm. you that time and that rather than being on the go and making sure you're just speaking to yourself in a kind tone. I think yeah. giving yourself the time is a kind act. And that's that's also important. Uh, so that's what came up for me. Well, it, it's like, you know, for people who respond to this, uh, which is most people, um, you know, it, it's actually really good to do in bed when you can't sleep. I was doing a lot of this last night. Um, and and if you're in bed and your and your mind is just racing, then just kind of lying there and placing those kind hands on your body and just coming back and you can weave in any other mindfulness practice into that to kind of you know just mindfulness of the breath or a mindful body scan, but just with those kind hands there, sort of anchoring and 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 infusing that mindfulness practice with that sense of being kind to yourself. So. Um, yeah. Uh, and the nice thing about doing that is that even if you're, you know, obviously you're awake, but it's much more restful than just lying there caught up in the in the worrying and the ruminating and the tossing and turning. True. And I think there's something, as you say, about the touch that you can anchor on it more. So if your mind yeah. did wander, I could be like, okay, just what, what does my hand feel like on my chest and, and bring yeah. that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So i got a couple of questions at the end slightly different to all of this uh obviously last couple of times i would have asked you like you know if you could pick up the phone and call probably your 20 year old self or 30 year old self uh, uh, today i thought i've never asked anyone this but you know you're british you've lived in australia probably longer than you lived in britain now is that yeah yeah that's um, true <clears throat> so you know if you could pick up the phone and call your british self <laughs> what would you tell him <laughs> I'll tell them they don't have toffee crisps in Australia, uh, so you better eat as many as you can before you emigrate or you're going to suffer from bad cravings. Yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, what would I tell him? Well, uh, it's probably more that, that uh, I, gosh, what was I, 20, 25, so it would be more, um, not the fact that he's he's English or living in English, but just, you know, he's a 25-year-old. <laughs> doesn't really know very much. Uh, I mean, they, you know, don't worry so much about what other people think of you. Mm. Um, I, I'd probably say to him, don't think that moving to Australia is going to solve all your problems. They will come with you. <laughs> the weather's better, but <laughs> all of your internal issues are still going to be there. Mm. All of your struggles are still going to be there. You know, you won't, uh, you won't escape them. Um, I would say to him, uh, you know, I, I mean, probably the same things that anybody would say to their younger self, you know, just spend more time uh, enjoying life and less time worrying about the future. It's going to pan out one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good point. Uh, how old are you? you got, uh, how I'm 37. Yeah, what would you say to your 25 year old self? <laughs> um retrain as a therapist uh, i mean i started <laughs> retraining like, three years after that but um i don't know what i'd say just i'll probably go get go to therapy you've waited long <laughs> enough um, yeah again it took me another two years after that but yeah i'd probably something like yeah. that i'd probably tell my uh my english self drink less you know then you'll have more brain cells when you get to my <laughs> age um but i i think he he would not really respond very well to that advice. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, and yeah, you got a billboard. What do you want written on that billboard? 
Ooh, um, gosh. Is, is it supposed to be a profound message or is it be uh, anything you want? Oh, even be an image. Be an image. Gosh. Uh, and this is a public billboard that anybody can yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, it would probably be a quote. It would probably be a, 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 one of my favorite quotes. Um, I think I'm tempted to go with, with uh, Winston Churchill when, when you're going through hell, keep going. Mm. Um, I'm also tempted to go with the uh, American poet Ogden Nash. Uh, there's a poem of his called The Wedding Cup. Um, that would actually be very good. Uh, it goes, um, to keep your marriage brimming with love in the wedding cup, whenever you're wrong, admit it. Whenever you're right, shut up. Um, <laughs> and I think that's probably good advice for any relationships. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I always forget the, you... when I'm right bit. <laughs> what would you I put on yours? Oh, yeah. Um... I don't know. Be kind's coming up for me. <laughs> just maybe because we've just done that exercise, but I think <laughs> the world is so easy, so quick to jump yeah. to attack. And I think be kind. Yeah. 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 But I, I guess my second choice would be um, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga in cinemas now. That would okay. also be quite a, yeah. a good one. Is it? Is it in <laughs> cinemas now? Oh, it starts next week, actually. All oh, right, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, yeah, I'll be in cinemas by the time this comes out. Um, exactly. Cool. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on and doing those exercises. It's a pleasure as always. No, well, thanks for having me. Thank you. Good luck with it all. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast. And thank you to our Patreons who helped make this episode possible. And if you would like to find out more about Patreon and the rewards and benefits, then there will be a link in the episode description. If you enjoy the OCD Stories podcast and would like to support us, please subscribe and rate the show wherever you listen to the podcast. And thank you to NoCD for supporting our work. If you want to find out more about NoCD, head to go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories or click the link in the episode description. And quick disclaimer, guys, this podcast is not therapy. It is not a replacement for therapy. Please seek treatment from a trained professional. And until we speak... Take care.